because Garmin Savello, who won the team time trial yesterday, are all of a sudden on the front. First Tour de France, he's going to have to hold off Rojas as they race for the line. It is desperately coached, but Tyler Farrow gets it on the line. Garmin Savello cannot do a thing wrong. It's game on. Tonight, switching gears from hockey to racing, we try to catch up with Ryan Wade. Forget sophomore slump, Andrew Harris looks to make his mark in the CFL. And Dylan Armstrong throws Paul Haysom 21 meters. Hang on, that's a shot put. Either way, it's game on. Game on is brought to you by Jenner Chevrolet Buick GMC. Here for you and in your community on the Old Island Highway. Hello and welcome to Game On. Happy belated Canada Day and happy 4th of July to our American viewers. I would be Paul, that would be Jeff. We have another great show for you tonight. Yes, we do, Paulie. We have officially moved into summer sports from lacrosse to football. We have it all this evening, but first we're going to start with stage three at the Tour de France and another good day for Victoria's Ryder Hedgedahl and his teammates. That is right. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, yesterday, Ryder Hedgedahl's Garmin Cervelo team won the second stage of the Tour de France, and today it was another win for Garmin as Tyler Farrar became the first American to win the Tour de France stage on the July 4th holiday. And check this out, some French farmers getting creative today. Nice. Pretty impressive. Today's stage, a 190k ride from alain sur to Redon. I'm probably butchering that, but a fantastic ride. Yes, you were butchering that. Another fantastic <laughs> ride for Ryder Eshtal's uh, Garmin Cervello team. You can see them in the blue helmets, and here's a close-up of the man himself, Ryder Eshtal, working hard to keep the pace. Yeah, now the Garmin Cervello team won this in the final 2k of the race. Thor Hushold turned on the Jets and then protected Tyler Farrar as he sprinted to his first ever tour victory, just barely sneaking over the line in first place. Uh huh. A great ride by the entire team. Victoria's rider Hejdal moved from 61st to 57th overall, but after the race, Farrar talked about Garmin Cervello's amazing teamwork. I mean, I think you see the teams flying. We have nine guys on super form and Getting the, the first victory out of the way yesterday, they're just going to come easier and easier, and you know we already got another one today. You had the smile this morning. You told me all the pressure was off. Now you've got a personal win. What do you think this team can do this year in the Tour de France? Oh, I think it's just the beginning. We still have 18 more stages. Uh, I hope we can, we can win even more and, and put someone in GC, and, and who knows. Just an unbelievable race for Garmin Cervello again today, Jeff. And when you think biking, you think individual sports, but really, the tour is a team event. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see how it uh, flows, and Ryder Hedgedahl may get a chance uh, to win a stage as he'll be great in the mountain stages, in fact, uh, tomorrow, stage four. And in fact, when you went to Maui for the Ryder Hedgedahl cycling camp, you actually got to ride with the Garmin team, yeah. including Mr. Farrar himself. Yeah, Tyler couldn't be a nicer guy, and a great tour win for him today, but not many people know there's an actual Victoria connection. Victoria people may recognize you from when you were 15 years old. Explain why. Yeah, I, uh, back when I was a kid, I did the Bastion Square Cycling Festival. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I grew up in the Seattle area, so I spent a fair bit of time in Victoria and beautiful place. Uh, tell me about your team this year and how excited you are because uh, Thor is on the team this year and some new additions. Uh, you guys have to be pretty optimistic. Oh yeah, we've uh, we beefed things up a lot. You know, I think we've gone from you know, one of the best teams to, on paper, I think we're arguably possibly the best team in the world uh, going into next season. So, you know, the, the future looks pretty bright for us. I think uh, we're going to win a lot of bike races. And speaking of biking, the Tour de France of mountain biking, the BC bike race continued today. Now, yesterday was day one of the seven-day mountain biking race. Today, the riders tackled a great single track of Campbell River. That is a new leg to this year's race. <laughs> that was the start wow. on the shores of beautiful Campbell River. No, you're not getting pulled over this time, Paul. 450 bikers from 23 different countries start on the road ride before heading on to that great single track. I've ridden this. There are two routes each day. The longer epic course, the shorter challenge course. Many Vancouver Island riders among the masses in this race. Here's a look at the leaders heading out of the single track and back onto the highway. And the sprint finish. The winner of today's uh, stage was Chris Shepard. And both the riders and organizers of the BC Bike Race blown away by the riding and the hospitality of Camp. Campbell River. Ah, today's race was awesome. Campbell River, the newest stage of the uh, 2011 BC bike race, has uh, just wound up with some of the leaders. We're probably about halfway through the day. And uh, 
Awesome trails, world-class trails. It's really what brings the, uh, the 450 participants, uh, 23 countries. You know, I'm hearing wow in uh, three different languages. It's pretty cool. Um, what, what, they, what you got was a, a lot of single track. You know, this is um, kilometers and kilometers of single track in a row, which is really what people come from all around the world to Campbell River and BC to experience. Now the BC bike race is in its fifth year and as mentioned, this was the first year they took on Campbell River as a course. Now Vancouver Island mountain bikers know how great the riding is in Campbell River, but now riders from all across the world have had a chance to see what Campbell River has to offer. I want to do every year some, some different race and to do something different and uh, it was a good opportunity for me to, to race this BC bike race. I know this race since, since a long time. I know because a lot of people speak about uh, this area also, Vancouver area with a lot of single try and uh, it was a, a bit a dream for me to, to come to this area and to, to enjoy this type of uh, track now I know and uh, it's, it's really fun for mountain biking, biking it's, it's one of the best places in the world for sure. I think BC is known all over the world for the best mountain biking so the race actually gives you a reason to come here and sort of uh, experience it and then we're going to spend a week in Whistler afterwards uh, playing in some of the bike parks there as well. Jolly good. All right moving on to other sports and with the Victoria Salmon Kings packing up and leaving town you might wonder what happens to all those players. Well some will find work elsewhere in the minor leagues and some will even retire but for longtime Salmon Kings player and coach Ryan Wade he's happy just sitting behind the wheel. Mike Walker explains. Most would agree sprint car racing and professional hockey are about as far apart as two sports can be. That is, unless your former Victoria Salmon King, Ryan Wade. Hockey's my job. Some people might want to say that's fun, but uh, that's my job and this is the fun part. This is where we get to come out and, uh, uh, you know, Saturday nights and, and mess around in the shop and, and have some fun. The Victoria native spent four seasons on the ice with the Salmon Kings and added another three behind the bench an experience he wouldn't trade for the world. It was seven years of my life that I'll never forget. I mean, uh, to be able to come out of amateur hockey and, and turn pro uh, in your hometown and, and be able to come back home after being away for 10 years, uh, it was real special for me. And, and to be able to uh, continue that on for seven years uh, through the whole, the whole time the organization was here, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun for my family and, and, you know, a lot of fun for my friends as well to be able to come out and watch me and support me. But with the end of every hockey season comes the shift to the track. And it's a tradition that has been in the Wade family for years. My grandpa took my dad to the racetracks and, and, and all his brothers. And then, you know, my dad just continued that on. Our weekend camping trips were uh, weekend racing trips. And, uh, you know, it just sort of uh, brought us together. And, uh, you know, it continues on that way now. You know, dad and I in the shop working on the car with, uh, you know, my brothers. And uh, it's just a lot of camaraderie and a lot of fun. Well, there aren't many comparisons between the two sports, Wade says both hockey and racing have one key thing in common. Just a competitive nature. I mean, uh, you know, if you're, if you're playing high-end sports and, uh, you know, at a high pace, it's you got that competitive instinct in you and you get the same feeling behind the, behind the wheel. But, uh, um, you know, you, you can't really put a lot to, I guess, reaction time and, and reading and reacting, trying to find holes in the racetrack and trying to find holes in, in the defense and hockey. But, uh, you know, there's a little bit of similarities, but it's definitely a lot different. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more fun hitting the boards in hockey than it is in one of these things. Uh, a little less expensive to do it in the, the, the hockey side. And I'm more comfortable with leaning on the right rear. But even with the Salmon Kings gone, Wade says his career of choice is on the ice. I want to stay in coaching, or at least hockey anyways, uh, in some form, but coaching's my main uh, main focus right now that I want to, I want to keep on doing and uh, you know see where it takes me, and uh, if it doesn't, then we'll have to figure something else out. This portion of Game On brought to you by Sopranos Bar & Grill, where fans gather before and after the game. And actually, Waiter sent me a text earlier today. Is that said, your phone? Uh, This is my phone. Yes. I thought you had an older phone. <laughs> He thought I had the big one yeah, with the long end. The phone. No, Waiter said uh, he won his first main event in the sprint car Saturday, won the main event in the stock car as well the same night. So good going to nice racing break. Ryan Wade. <laughs> All right. All right. Coming up, let's switch gears to the gridiron and talk BC Lions and former Vancouver Island Raider star Andrew Harris. Yeah, that's right. And I catch up with Victoria's 800 meter man, meet, Gary meet. Reed, for a quick shift. More game on right after a short break. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Game On, and remember to stick around for our island shout-out, our plays of the week. Those are coming up a little later in the big program. Yeah, you're also going to want to see how far Dylan Armstrong can throw <laughs> yeah, a shot really? put. It's a little ridiculous, yeah. but first we're going to head over to the gridiron and talk a little pigskin, Jeff. Yes, thank you, Paulie. Well, it seems like a long time ago now that Andrew Harris was making headlines as an outstanding running back with the Vancouver Island Raiders. Well, 2011 will be his second full season as a professional in the CFL with the BC Lions. However, the Winnipeg native did not have a smooth offseason. Former Vancouver Island Raider Andrew Harris was busy preparing for his second season as a pro when it was almost completely derailed. I was just working out back in Winnipeg and I was doing a routine uh, bench press, um, something I would, the weight that was uh, nothing I've overexerted or anything like that and uh, ended up tearing my, my pectoral. Medical staff expected the worst, sidelined for six months, which in a short competition like the CFL could put the whole season in jeopardy for Harris. But an impressive recovery trimmed that time to just under four months. I thought I was going to miss a bit of camp and I didn't end up missing any of the camp, so uh, it's definitely not a setback at all. Be Harris. In fact, Harris made his return just in time, playing in the final preseason game, thrashing of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Good return for the Canadian. I think psychologically he's made a lot of progress. Uh, we didn't play him the first game, and, I, you know, and that was uh, for a reason. Uh, he did play in the second game, had a good return, had some good runs. <laughs> In 2011, Harris is hoping it won't be another season restricted to special teams, where he has been effective as a kick returner. Well, he just basically said he wants to get the ball in my hands, and, uh, you know, I'm happy to hear that right now. Uh, you know, when the head coach says that to you, um, whether you're the starter or a backup, uh, you know, you're going to get a couple opportunities. So that's all, that's all I'm hoping for, and uh, just to make the best of the opportunities when I get them. You know, so now I think, you know, the best is still ahead of him, and, uh, you know, we plan on using him a little bit with the offense and hopefully a lot with the returns. And with troubled teammate Jonas Davis now off the roster, the competition in the running back ranks has changed. Oh, well, you know, anytime a player leaves at the same position, obviously he's going to open up the opportunity and, uh, and and give you more room to breathe a little bit. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sad thing that he's gone, and uh, I wish him all the best. It has certainly been an eventful offseason for Andrew Harris, but it's all experience that will help him grow as a professional player. I think he just matured a lot more this year, and I know what to expect. Um, Last year, every 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 week was kind of you know kind of feel it out and see how it was. But now I know what to expect. I know how to prepare myself properly, and uh, just the maturity part of it is probably the biggest thing. Good luck to Andrew. Well, the 23rd running of the Victoria International Track Classic went on Sunday, and it was another huge success. Yeah, it sure was. But this year, Victoria's 800-meter man, Gary Reed, was not racing as he has retired from the sport. But he was on hand to watch the event, and young Paul caught up with him for a quick shift. All right, here with Victoria's 800-meter dynamo, Gary Reed. We're ready for a quick shift. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do All it. right. First question. First car. Uh, two th uh, 1982 Toyota Tercel. Nice. What was playing in that Toyota Tercel? And, uh, little Black Street. I like the way you work, kid. No diggity. I thought to bag it up. Bag it up. Nice. I like. <laughs> All right. Movie about your life. Who's playing Gary Reed? Hmm. Who's playing Gary Reed? Hmm. Probably, I guess Denzel. Nice. Who else, right? Yeah. You know? I was thinking Denzel too. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Best place to holiday? Um, I would I would probably say Hawaii. It's the best place I've been. Yeah. Nice. Two tickets to any sporting event in the world. Where are you going? Men's 800 meter final at the Olympics. Nice. Are you in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> best uh, best race you ever were part of. Uh, World Championships. Nice. Favorite place to race? Switzerland. Least favorite place to race? Uh, Italy. Nice. Best place to run not on a track in Victoria? The Lakes. The Lakes, fantastic. Yeah. All right, this quick shift brought to you by Gary Reed. Such a nice guy yeah. and uh, was honored this weekend as well when they named the 800 meter race the Gary Reed Classic. Yes, much Good deserved. Stuff. And another great day at the Victoria International Track Classic yesterday with a few records set. Let's look at some of the other highlights. Yeah, that's American Mary Saxer setting a new track record with a jump of 4 meters 46. But of course, the most exciting event of the day, the 100 meter dash. Here's the men's race. We sped it up a little bit. Tom no. Finisher <laughs> clocked in at just over 10 Look seconds. At him go. Not seven. Felicia George won the 100 meter women's race. She also won the 100 meter hurdles. A great day all around.
Uh, we got really lucky with the weather. I think the distance athletes would have preferred less wind, but it's warm, which is a good thing this spring. We had a nice turnout on, on the crowd for the long weekend and some really good performances. I'm just a hurdler usually, so it was kind of just a workout to get in the 100. Uh, my start was really clicking today, so I got out really well in both races and just finished strong. Two for two. Are you going to go into shot put or something? Try another <laughs> one? Three three? I think I'm good with just these two, yeah. Yeah, and while Felicia wasn't doing the shot put, this guy was world number one in BC boy Dylan Armstrong. This guy is the current world champion and in top form yesterday with a throw of over 21 meters. He easily <laughs> took the title. Always a crowd favorite, and he makes a point of coming back to Victoria for this event every year. It felt great. Um, you know, I'm probably, I mean, I don't know. It's probably my best comp as far as like how I'm feeling. So. 21.35 or 36 it was. Um, I got to be really happy with that. You know, it's, I think it's just nice to be able to have your event, um, you know, around close to home anyways, and uh, gives, gives us guys the opportunity to show, especially show the young kids what we do, and I think it's a lot of fun for them. Big boy. Yeah. If he can throw it 21 meters, how far can you throw it? You know, I'd probably be happy if I could just lift it. That would be pretty that impressive. Like it is eight pounds. Yeah, let's take a <laughs> short break. Uh, still more game on to come, but first, here's a look at some island standings. Island standings are brought to you by Robbins Parking, proudly supporting local community and events. Welcome back to the show we call Game On. Some great stuff still to get to, and we're going to stick with our summer sports, Jeff. Yeah, we've done biking, yep. car racing, football, track and field. Let's round the whole get Let's together make it a full hand. with some Let's make it a full hand. lacrosse. All right, thank you, Jeff. And we are past the midway mark of the WLA season, and Victoria Shamrocks are just two points out of first place. The team have looked very strong this year, but it's not just because of their stars, but some of their role players, like Captain Nick Inch. The Victoria Shamrocks are one of the highest scoring teams in the entire WLA. But when it comes to scoring goals, Captain Nick Inch knows he doesn't quite have the same offensive power as a guy like Reese Dutch. He was actually joking around after last game. I think he had five goals and four assists. And uh, he was talking about how it was a good game. And then he uh, mentioned how that was probably the uh, entire scoring that I'd get in a season. And I just kept my mouth shut because I think that might be the entire scoring I've had in a career. <laughs> With one goal and one assist in 10 games, Nick Inch sits 22nd in team scoring. Tied for points with backup goalie Matt Flindell. But Inch isn't too worried about scoring goals. He's happy to quietly lead the team from the back end. I've always played defense, and uh, I think any defensive player knows that you're not really going to get the, all the accolades. And, uh, you know, we all play because we love the game. Um, I think that's why anyone plays this sport. But the defender's work doesn't go completely unnoticed. Head coach Walt Christensen knows you won't see Nick's name on many score sheets, but he's the uncontested leader of the team. He, he leads by examples, the, the players respect him so much and on the floor he's been our best defensive player. I have so much respect for Nick as a person and as a player. Uh, great defensive player, great, uh, great role model, great leader in the community and on the floor. And the one goal Nick did score this year was an absolute thing of beauty. Uh, I was in Maple Ridge. Um, I just uh, got lucky, I guess. Went down on a breakaway and uh, kind of closed my eyes and shot the net and it happened to go in. I think I have one assist too, so if I can double that score by the end of the year, I think I might be my best year ever. And while the goal was a crowd pleaser, Nick knows his role, and that's to take care of his side of the floor while inching along offensively. You know, it's, it's, nice to, it's nice to get recognized for the one goal you score, but, uh, you know, that's not why we play the game. So, as long as we win as a team. There you go. Nick Inch, good Canadian kid, and hopefully he'll be a difference maker this year. The Rocks need to get past those pesky salmon belts. That ball. is right. All right, it's time for this week's edition of Island Shoutout, a look at some athletes from across Vancouver Island. Yeah, we start out with some baseball, and Little League 9 and 10 district championships are going on right now. This game between oh. National and Central Saanich, and check out the bud bill. Cannot beat the throw at home. Nice try, though. All right, big shout-out to the Nanaimo Pirates. 
Where are they? There they are. They swap, they swap their bats and gloves for shovels and rakes to fix up Sir Axman Stadium in hopes of hosting a playoff game later this month. Yes, and congratulations to the U14 Victoria Capitals who can now call themselves provincial champions. Nice going to these young men. Yeah, shout out to Alex Mauner who won the IMS 4 mini stock feature at Western Speedway. A young Ryan Wade in the making. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, if you have any photos or a video of something sports related, get it right here to us. Yeah, two ways to do that. Email us, game on at checknews.ca, or give us a call. It's easy, 480-3700. All right, my friends, it is time for my mom's favorite part of What's the show. That? What's that? You know she loves our Plays of the Week. Plays of the Week is brought to you by Spank It Sports, BC's largest selection of soccer, rugby, and football stuff. All right, let's start with baseball, kind of. Cirque du Soleil performer throws out probably the best opening pitch of all time, the flip. Nice. And the strike. Nice. Take some notes, Doc Halliday. That's how it's done. Senior National Field Hockey Championships at UVic last week. Team BC winning their second straight title, and it was thanks to goals like that there, a little tic-tac-toe. Nice work. Just down the hill, Victoria International Track Classic taking place. How about the pole ball from Mary Saxer? Setting the new track record. Wow. Jump of 4 meters 46. That's good. Yeah, that is good. This is amazing. Top shot putter in the world. <laughs> Dylan Armstrong. He's a BC boy and thrills the Victoria crowd with a throw of over 21 meters. That guy is pretty big. Yes, he is. All right, big day for Novak Djokovic. Check out the hustle here to get to the ball that's all but gone. The Joker takes Wimbledon, and he is the new world number one. Gives the trophy a little smooch. Why wouldn't you? Victoria Highlanders and Victoria United played a friendly last week. Nothing friendly about this. Ooh. Penalty in the box. United capitalized. The Victoria boys beat the Highlanders for the first time in three years. Good stuff. All right, BC Bike Race kicked off in Cumberland on Sunday. This is such an awesome event. Oh, yeah. Jeff King will be riding in it this week. No. But he's probably going to be doing <laughs> this. Oh, yeah, a huge crash. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> in day one of the Tour de France, Ryder Hedgedal was caught up in that mess. But don't worry, his Garmin Cervelo team made up for it by winning the time trial and today's stage. Yeah, good going, Ryder. We're all rooting for you back home. Bring us home a yellow jersey. All right, well, that just about does it for another edition of Game On, our tribute to summer sports. That's right. I think we only mentioned hockey once, That's good. which has got to be a record. Yes. Until next week, thanks for joining us, and good night. Thanks for joining us.